I'm glad you're here with me today. Do me a favor, find someone around you and thank them just for being them. Great job. Thanksgiving is over and we're on to the Christmas season, but today we're taking one last look at gratitude. Being thankful and showing gratitude doesn't have to stop with the month of November. Oh no, we can make it last all year long. We can make it a habit, something you do without even thinking. What is gratitude? Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. It's not just a one-time thing, it's an all-the-time thing. Like how we can give a shout out to God anytime just to stop and thank Him. Think of a time when God has helped you. Got it? Good. Now, let's all shout out thank you to God. Ready? Thank you, God! We are made to give praise to God every single day. That's what I love about worship. It's a way for us to do the thing that we're made to do. Let's sing to Jesus now and tell Him thank you. Come on, sing with me. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say thank you for the way you love me. I want to say thank you. super grateful that I get to share what's in the Bible with you, and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. Today we're looking at something the Apostle Paul wrote in a letter to the church in Corinth. We call it 1 Corinthians. In this part of the letter, Paul was talking to the believers in Corinth about a really cool and special kind of celebration. We have lots of celebrations that remind us of something important that happened before, like your birthday for example. On your birthday, you're celebrating the day that you were born. And at Christmas, we celebrate the day that Jesus was born, right? 
And at Easter, we celebrate how Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, right? Well, there's another celebration that happens often in churches around the world. And that's what Paul was writing about in his letter to the Corinthians. It's called communion or the Lord's Supper. But what does it mean? Where does it come from? Why do we celebrate it? Why is there food involved? Let's go find out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. The night before Jesus gave up his life, he had a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. Take this and eat it. The Israelites had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time. It all began in Egypt when God's people were forced into slavery. At last, God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would let the Israelites go. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. And finally, God sent the tenth and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day, but God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. Get out of here. Go! The Israelites packed so quickly that they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flatbread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal of lamb and flatbread with no yeast, just like the bread they had taken with them out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Jesus grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the meal with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about it years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled out so that we can live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and made a brand new habit of gratitude, 
the Lord's Supper, or Communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued His people from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance for us to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and to thank Him for all He's given us. Jesus added new meaning to an old habit. He took the amazing tradition of Passover and He fulfilled it. He created a whole new celebration that we now call communion. Just like we take time out to celebrate birthdays and Christmas, Easter, or even things like graduation, we can take some time to remember all that God has done. Communion is a great way that we can do that together. For those of us who believe in Jesus, communion is a way for us to remember that Jesus died on the cross for us. The bread reminds us of His body, and the cup reminds us of the blood that He shed for our sins. Communion looks a little different in different churches, but what's most important is the reason why we celebrate. We take communion to remember how Jesus died on the cross for us and set us free. We make a habit of celebrating communion together as a way to share our gratitude for Jesus. Communion is just one way that we can get in the habit of being grateful. But wow, it's such a great thing for us to do together. We need to find those kinds of reminders every day that will help us remember to be thankful to God and to other people. Let's get in the habit of being grateful. Right now, let's talk to God and tell Him how thankful we are for all that He's done for us. God, we are so grateful for who You are and for what You do for us every day. Thank You for sending Your Son, for taking care of us, for teaching us right from wrong, for giving us the Bible, for filling us with your Holy Spirit, and for so many other things. Please help us to get in the habit of being grateful when we do things like celebrate communion together and as we live every day with a thankful attitude. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bottom line, get in the habit of being grateful. I'll see you in December. is on my side you're always there when life's not fair kept me from trying to run and hide so i thought so i thought that i should let you know
you've given up